the FDA just came out with a statement saying they pulled all pelvic mesh off the shelves uh, in the United States of America. And this is following actions that Australia and uh, Britain and the United Kingdom are doing. So what does this mean for you? What does this mean for women? And should we be concerned? I'm Dr. Kasperson. I'm a board certified practicing urologist in Washington state. And I help women with incontinence, pelvic floor dysfunction, prolapse, incontinence, uh, sexual health, uh, and urology in general. So. The FDA just made a statement coming uh, and has hit the hit the newsstands, New York Times, CNN, hit all the major news players yesterday saying that within 10 days, all pelvic floor mesh has to come off of the shelves in America. And this is generating a lot of confusion and, and I think inappropriately scaring a lot of women. So first of all, if you've had pelvic mesh, uh, either slings or for prolapse, and you don't have any issues, and you're feeling healthy and fine, you do not need to be worried. Nothing is being recalled. You do not need surgery. And if you're doing fine and have no symptoms, you don't have to come and see a pelvic floor specialist. Um, so first things first, if you've had this surgery in the past, and you're doing well from it, that's fantastic. And you don't need to worry. You don't need to do anything. So the other source of confusion in this is the difference between prolapse mesh and the difference uh, in stress incontinence and sling mesh. So prolapse mesh is the only thing that's being pulled off the shelves and it's only three products from two different companies. Prolapse mesh is a bigger piece of mesh, kind of about a deck of card size, and it's used really only by uh, specialized, trained, uh, pretty small portion of surgeons and usually done for recurrence uh, or very specially uh, patients. It's really not used that much for your bread and butter prolapse surgeries anymore. So we're, we're not talking a bunch, a bunch of surgeries are, are being halted because of this. So big piece of mesh goes in the, usually the anterior or top side of the vagina to help with prolapse. That is, is what is being come off the shelves. And why is it coming off the shelves? Not because the product is dangerous or bad, but because the FDA believes that the outcomes with using that mesh compared to outcomes using not mesh, there's not a big enough difference to justify the risks of mesh. So the FDA is not saying this is bad, it's tainted, it's infected. They're not saying that. They're just saying there's not enough data to say that using it is any better than a surgery not using it. So some pelvic uh, floor experts disagree with that. Um, but that is kind of where the statement's coming from. So not because it's a bad product or bad companies. These are very, very tested. There are, there are dozens and dozens of uh, literature and research done on this, and dozens of published studies. So it's not bad in and of itself. The FDA just says it's not giving women any better success, and so the risk of it is not worth it. So separate prolapse from stress incontinence. Stress incontinence is leaking of urine due to cough, sneeze, laugh. Basically a force on the pelvic floor allows urine to come out. That is a mesh sling, about the size of my finger. Those are not being recalled. But it's very, very confusing because if you look at the CNN articles or the New York Times articles, you're gonna see a picture of pelvic floor mesh. It's just this little strip of mesh. That is not being recalled. That is the gold standard for surgery for stress incontinence in this country and many other countries. So I think a lot of women, because they don't know, they don't have a good resource to go to, uh, and it's confusing. Pelvic floor mesh must mean both kinds of mesh. So very distinct, stress incontinence mesh slings, they're not being recalled, they're not being pulled off, and they're still the gold standard for stress incontinence surgery. Very different than pelvic floor mesh that's done for prolapse. So trust your gynecologist, primary care doctor, or urologist. If you have questions, come in and see us. I think a lot of women get scared because their cousin heard something and they're, that's where you're getting your education and news source from. And it's best really to educate yourself, see a doctor who does these surgeries, who sees these women and can give you the background story and really put your mind at rest to say, these are not unsafe products. The FDA is just first doing no harm. And Again, the difference between incontinence slings and prolapse mesh are very different, and the incontinence slings are not going away. They are not bad. Uh, they, they do work better than just using native tissue or just stitches. That's why they are allowed to be on the market still. So I hope this cleared up questions. Let me know what your questions are because I don't know how to help you if I don't know what your questions are. 
So, and, and asking your questions and getting them answered, we can help educate other women too, which is great. So leave a comment, let me know how I can help, let me know how I can clarify this for people because pelvic floor health is a huge problem even though it's not talked about very much. But one in three women suffer from incontinence, about one in five women uh, prolapse and about one in eight women will actually have a surgery for prolapse within her life. So uh, here's to good pelvic floor health. Thank you for listening.